you can only be an example if you're leading. We cannot say we have so and so as a reference point mm -hmm. or as an example, which we have turned out to be in the shortest of time. Mm -hmm. If we're just following, if we're just employees somewhere, yeah. yeah. In fact, I keep telling people I would never have started a business if the vision and the values that I saw in the place where I was working aligned with my beliefs, aligned with my vision. You would have been values. comfortable. I would have there. stayed there. Yeah. Which, by the way, would have been okay. So I'm not. I'm not the kind who advocates for everyone starting a business. Right. I think there should be something more than just earning a living because you can earn the living either way while yeah. you're employed. Yeah. In fact, there's no guarantee you'll be richer. Wealthier, as we've been made to believe, yeah. because you've run, you're running a business. Your own business. I've come across a book called Making Money is Killing Your Business. Whoa. And it says that the fundamental reason, it asks the question, what is the fundamental reason why people should start business? And so many examples are given. To be rich, to do all these things, to impact people. And the guy says, no, it is to be free. And, and, and it's amazing. Free, not in the sense that just wake up and do nothing. Free that you choose the kind of impact you want free that you choose the kind of legacy free that you get to create your own path chatter your own path yeah? yeah go to the road less traveled and leave a trail that's the purpose of you getting to start an entity it's like you give the example of a child you only bring a child on earth not because of your in 2018 we were the first ugandan indigenous farm to be recognized at the africa legal awards yeah highly commended law firm in africa signum advocates the whole of africa the whole of africa being intentional. At the East African Law Society level, we've been recognized as a leading law firm. That's not because there are no other firms that qualify. Yeah, I think it's the vision. It's to say our picture of the preferred future is this. This is how we are going to be known. We are to be, as people say it. Yeah? But can you work it out on a daily basis? Does your strategy, does your budget, does all these things you do, do they reflect that he did that? Story? Alex Matovu is a 34-year-old practicing commercial lawyer and a managing partner at Signum Advocates, a Ugandan law firm that he co-founded in the year 2014. Over the years, Alex has led the team at Signum Advocates and uh, advised more than 50 companies on Uganda's legal and uh, compliance requirements. His advisory works entails mergers and acquisitions, transactions, private equity, uh, debt financing, due diligence, among his others. In March 2018, the law firm received the Legacy Award from the UCU Law Society for soaring higher and doing so with integrity and excellence. The firm was also recognized at the Africa Legal Awards in Johannesburg, South Africa, as a highly commended law firm in 2018. This was the first time an indigenous Uganda firm was recognized at the awards. In October 2021, the corporate and finance teams at the firm were recognized as the teams of the year 2021 at the inaugural Uganda Law Society Awards, hallmarking the firm's status and not only with its clients but also within the fraternity. Alex is the current chairperson of the Professional Development Committee of the Ugandan Law Society, having been appointed in November 2020. In less than a year, Alex initiated the development of a training platform for the young lawyers in Uganda, codenamed Young Lawyers Membership Series, YLMS, and mentored six other young lawyers who now constitute the YLMS committee. This CV is quite a bit and I'm not going to go through it all. But I had a conversation with this man on the subject of daring and you know exactly what that is. It takes a man who is daring to begin a law firm at the age of 26 years. We're going to listen to this conversation and I'm hoping that you're going to love it and you're going to learn one or two things. And with that, we'll close this month's conversations on the subject of daring. Enjoy. <music> Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. 
Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Signatures episodes are brought to you by AfricanBooks.com, which is an online ebook platform that seeks to broadcast the African Christian voice to the world. As such, they have become a hub for African content, connecting African writers and publishers with a global reading audience. Publishing your books on their site is free and easy, with authors having full control over their content and the price they choose to sell at it. I was personally blown away by the concept that AfricanBooks.com is coming up with. Things like... No content from their site or their app is going to be run on laptops so that people can easily copy. In other words, your content as a writer is restricted from digital multiplication or digital copying. So you remain intact with your information. Another concept that I got so blown away with was the fact that in some time to come, in due course, AfricanBooks.com will be starting to announce African Writer of the Year. In other words, there will be competitions in all African countries to figure out who is the best published author. And I also fell in love with the fact that countries can actually compete against each other. You can have African authors going at it after each other. And your book as an author will be reviewed and have some stars and recommended upon that particular platform. The thing is that it's an answer to Amazon.com. You know, with Amazon, what happens? You've got to have an account in the Americas or whatever, or in Europe before you can get paid as an author. But here, the local currency is in play and the local means of getting paid are in play. So to get started, go to AfricanBooks.com as an author or as a publisher and even as a reader if you wanted to read your African favorite authors. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome once again to yet another episode on Life as Signatures Radio. My name is Lawrence Namale. In the month of August, we are talking about the subject of daring, and uh, there's so much to learn from that particular subject, that particular topic. In order to bring this topic to life, I had to interview several people and just learn from them what it is that they do that uh, is daring. Of course, I've interacted with these people once in a while in their lives, and I've seen that the stuff that they're doing is uh, out of this world. And today, on the show, we have... uh, Alex Matovu, do you have a third name? Yes. Uh-huh. Are you the first to ask me that publicly? Yeah. I have a middle name um, and it starts with a D. It's Drake. <laughs> Alex that is Drake the, Matovu. Alex Drake Matovu. I was expecting a Luganda name. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't use it a lot. I don't use it at all. At all? Yes. Okay. What happened? I don't think it ever appeared anywhere, actually. Yeah. Yo, I found out, actually, that it appears on my baptism certificate yeah uh, so essentially you would say it's one of those names that has baptized me somehow i'll find out maybe from my my mother yeah why it didn't turn out yeah, yeah, yeah. but but thereafter school and everywhere it was just that too yeah yeah last is it last month or a few months back or maybe let me just a few weeks back yeah. signum advocates yeah. was awarded something yes. uh you want to tell us about that yeah so um 
there, there are awards and of course this is a common question for professionals how do you know who is best in the field uh, who ranks who determines who is best and who is not so if you go to the internet you'll find that different people will have their opinions about lawyers but as lawyers we know that there are actually rankings that are recognized uh, one is called chambers and partners mm-hmm. the other is called IFLR international financial uh, law, law, law review mm-hmm. and the other is called uh, legal 500 at least those three um, mm-hmm. stand out Mm-hmm. So IFLR ranked us as a notable firm. A notable firm is the place where you get into, you know, the space of the big boys. Yeah. And then you move from rank, uh, we call them tiers, tier four, tier three, tier two, and then tier one. Yeah. Uh, why that for us was a big deal is that we've only been here eight years. Yeah. Our profession is known to be a prof- the gray-haired profession, yeah, yeah, we yeah. call it. Yeah. So we are practicing with people, even right now, who have been in the practice for more than 30 years. Yeah some as much as even 40 years and they're still practicing yeah and we're in the same field and we are ranked the same so in a space of eight years that cannot be a main fit yeah so that's why you know it's, it's one of the thing to, to celebrate it's a big deal it really is a big deal yeah because <clears throat> we're talking about daring here yeah. and where i want to approach this is the angle of you guys yeah. starting a law firm as in you becoming a partner in a law firm at the age of uh Oh, this uh, 26 at the age of 26 yeah. right normally the trajectory of a lawyer mm. is is what you you go to school you graduate and all that stuff yeah so there's steps that you're supposed to take yeah. as a lawyer mm-hmm. um, one when you're at law school of course right now there's internship mm-hmm. so in your third year it's a chance we didn't have um, at least in terms of the age when I studied the yeah. time when I studied so now, right now, third year, you can do an internship with a law firm. It's a very short period, three weeks, a month. Yeah. Really quite a short while to just have a feel of what happened in the field. Thereafter, you go to LDC. You go to LDC, which we call the back course, in your fifth year. It's the final year of study. Mm-hmm. You've already graduated from the university in mm-hmm. a four years degree uh, process. Mm-hmm. And then you come to do the diploma in legal practice. Diploma in legal practice, unfortunately, is still a taught program yeah. and you only have two and a half months out of a period of like nine months mm. uh, to study you only have those two and a half to get a feel of how the farm works in other jurisdictions say in Kenya it's called pupillage and then once you've graduated from LDC you're waiting to graduate and in, uh, and sorry once you've, you've finished the exams at LDC you're waiting to graduate and then um, enroll as an advocate mm. so during that period uh, in Kenya it's called holding over uh, we don't use the term as much here. We will call you an intern. We will call you a legal assistant. Yeah. And that's how you're supposed to work. And then thereafter, you become an associate say, after a year. And then grow through the, the bands of associates. Band one, band two, band three, depending on how the firm is structured. And then you have senior associates, principal associate, and then partner. And then at a partner level, there's also salaried partner, or what we, the people we call associate partners, yeah. and then equity partners. Those are the levels. And in summary, really, that's not a period that should be less than 10 years yeah. to do all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you finish law school yeah. and you go to LDC at that young age in the new 20s. Yeah. And all of a sudden, a law firm. Yeah. As in, that's honestly looking back. It, it, uh, have you seen guys who are doing the same? <laughs> if you look in your fraternity, uh, is, there, yeah. is there? Yeah. Now, I, I really can't speak for the profession as such, although I actually head the training and development committee of the Law Society. Yeah. So I have a bit of exposure in terms of the information there is about the profession. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's both common and not common. It's not common in the sense that starting it and doing it well and excelling at it at the pace you know, with which we've done it is one thing. But I think the other is the question of why I'm saying it's also possible is many start as a matter of necessity. So I know very many young lawyers that over the years have started. Mm-hmm. I've, they've not started from a very good place. Mm-hmm. My story is a bit different, mm-hmm. and I think that's partly what I'll share. Yeah. What makes me think it is possible, and why do I think this success has not been accidental? Yeah. It's an accumulation of very many things that have happened over time. But by all means, you can't take away from the fact that it was a dare. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, It was really daring. In a profession where, like I've already said, we are it's a gray haired profession, and by gray hair, maybe I didn't define, but really, we are trusted based on age, yeah, we are trusted based on experience. So, what makes you think that at 26, and my partners were 26, 27 as well, mm-hmm. my age mates, mm-hmm. we are three founders, and you are maybe what all of them think? unmarried, 
Exactly, of course. None unmarried, not even dating. You know, just <laughs> <laughs> you just don't even know what life holds ahead of you. But you know, we'll discuss how that comes. The up. question is, how in the world do you do that? I mean, what, yeah. what's what's the spirit behind it? Because yeah. the natural progression you've told us is ten years, yeah, or, and even sometimes more, yeah, and that's what quote unquote the majority of people do. Yes. They go through that natural progression until they, they get to a, a level where and not just in Uganda. Yeah. As in worldwide, isn't it? Mm. It's, it's that process. Certainly. But you guys you went you went acute. What yes. what what informed this there? Yeah. I think so I'll speak from two fronts. One I'll say what what for me was the inspiration, but like I said were three. Yeah. Again, maybe some of these things are shared, you know, across board amongst the three of us that causes us to think we can. Mm-hmm. My story is a little unique. Mm-hmm. I started working with a law firm in 2000 and, um, 2007. Yeah. I remember the university, there was a demonstration. First year law school, it's a common thing for, for Makere. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's more or less a custom, one that we are not proud of as a country that will have these strikes coming up. Mm-hmm. So this strike comes up towards exams, writing of exams, and mm-hmm. I'm thinking, man, they tell us you've been indefinitely, school is indefinitely closed and we'll call you anytime. Mm. But when we call you, you will have to do exams that day. Will when you report you. and you do exams? Yes. Yeah. So for me, that shook me to the nerve. Why? Because generally I'm not an average uh, performer in life. Mm. I'm not a mediocre. So I want to excel at these things. I was reading you know, towards you know, yeah. these exams. So if, if you create a break... There's a risk that I may actually not excel. Mm. So what I did, I went out, uh, reached out to an uncle of mine who is like my father figure. I told him I need a place where I can work but also earn something. And the reason why I talk about earning something is that I come from a family of five yeah. and my mother is taking care of all the five of us mm. and I'm the second born mm-hmm. and I feel there's responsibility that she carries and we had agreed well as in uh, secondary school that when we get to campus, she would never worry about my any, any amount on me, any money on me. Yeah, yeah. And at that point, she wasn't. But I feared that going back home would mean that she would. Yeah. So I, you know, I asked my uncle, said, can I get a place where I can read for the exams that will come anytime, yeah. but also be able to earn something. Mm-hmm. He recommends me to a law firm, and for two weeks, the law firm could not find anything useful I could do. Mm-hmm. Not only was I at campus, I'd never even sat for a single exam. So what are you going to do in a law firm? Long and short, I stayed on. I refused to say there's nothing I can do. And guess what? I had all the typical assignments of a non-lawyer in a law firm. Little did I know that these things would play out later. But the point I'm making is that I had the opportunity to have exposure to a law firm from my first year of law school, not first year of work. So by the time we talk about starting, only two years after law school, for me it is seven years of street experience. Yeah? Seven years of street experience. And for me, again, when you start a business, you realize that it's the technical is one thing. Mm-hmm. We are lawyers, yeah? Mm-hmm. But you've actually become a business owner. Mm-hmm. You are an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. You must learn how to manage human resource. You must learn how to operate the business. You must learn how to market the service. You must learn how to strategize. All those aspects. Manage finance, yeah? yeah? Things that you cannot... In our education system, you're not finding them anywhere. You're not taught that, that at, stuff. At, at, at uh, the LDC, where we're doing the diploma in legal practice, it's just one item, yeah. accounting for lawyers or something like that, yeah. that is for a, a semester, it's just one paper you're just reading to pass. You have no idea how this is going to play out in, 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 the, you know, in the real world. Whoa. For me, having been with this law firm for a while, I found out much later that that's the value that, that I was actually getting. So that, that's the background for me. But the other thing that really disturbed our spirits, I think all of us, we said, you know, we can do better. We can do better than where we've been. Our profession, surprisingly, people think we are the most compliant as lawyers. But actually, there's lots of things that are not done right in terms of how the employee and staff rights are dealt with. Mm. Contracts that, you know, people don't have contracts. People don't have salaries. Mm. I know firms where they last paid in April 2020. When COVID hit, they told their staff, you know, COVID is no here, mm. lockdown, there's no money. Up to today, yeah, there's no money. The question is, are these guys feeding? Are they being, you know, do they have to pay for transport? Are they going through the same transport system that we, the employers, are complaining about? Yeah. So for us, that was a common thread to say we need to set up something different. Something in your spirit yeah. didn't set yeah. up with what you saw. It, it just did. Yeah. It just did. And for us, that day was exactly that. I mean, the time we set up, even having 16 million as a contribution to starting this business is pa- money that pa- we had pa- to partner. borrow. 
that for was partner. Her partner. That's money we had to borrow from from parents, money we had to look for, you know, savings for many years to be able to put together. But what we saw in the future is something that we thought was worth taking the risk for. So you're getting yeah. these awards right now, yeah. even as we look back. Are you feeling mitigated? Do you feel like uh, the, 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 the move you made was the right one? Obviously so. Yeah. Obviously so. There couldn't be a better decision yeah. uh, than, than starting. And of course, that, that is, doesn't, doesn't mean that I would not have challenges. That's where I wanted to go. Because yeah. when you go on a route like this, yeah. it's like a mom... Yeah. What did what what was her reaction? Yeah. You see, uh, <laughs> traditionally people want certainty, yes. right? Yes. And they know certainty is what you described earlier yeah. that you go into a law firm and you go to through associate and so on, ten yeah. years, then you become someone who is, you know, known, knowledgeable. Yes. You've been working, you're attached to a name. Yes. Right? Yeah. I am I am Alex of whatever, whatever associates yes. or advocates. Yes. It's a big name. Yeah. But now you're going to start something that exactly. the country has no idea yes. what that animal is. Yes. You're not anywhere in... Yeah. You've never handled a case, uh, no pedigree, nothing. Yeah. But you guys, you decided this is the way to go. Yes. What, what was the feeling around you? Friends, yeah. loved ones, and so on. So I remember a number of examples I can share. There's three of them. If I forget them, please remember. One is from my mom. The other is from uh, one of my partners now, who we didn't start with initially. And then the other is a staff member. So I'll use those three examples. My mom was the most, or still is the most influential person in my life, I think right now next to my wife, mm-hmm. uh, told me two things in 2013 when I told her, you know what, we are starting. She told me, one, I think you're very young. You're not yet ready to start. Yeah. Number two, if you must start, then you really have to go, it, go at it alone. And her reasons were very simple. Number one, you're starting a business. It's going to be tough. You've been earning a million shillings. That money is important. You don't know what it takes for someone to run a business that can pay you that. You're signing up uh, into a situation where not only will you have to fend for yourself, but you will now be the one that pays others. And you're 26, for heaven's sake. The second is, uh, is the question of starting a launch. She gave me very clear facts, really. She told me business partnerships are really difficult and what, and she was 101 spot on. Yeah. What she didn't maybe appreciate about my, my motives and my, my beliefs mm. is that my, one of my fundamental principles is that there should be no limits in life unless you set them for yourself. It's only the limits that you set for yourself yeah. that should limit you. And what's the point there? Paul writes to Timothy and says, do not let anyone despise you because you're young. Mm. But instead, be an example Mm. to others in the following things. You cannot be an example by simply following. Mm. You can only be an example if you're leading. We cannot say we have so-and-so as a reference point Mm. or as an example, which we have turned out to be in the shortest of time. Mm -hmm. If we're just following, if we're just employees somewhere, yeah. yeah. In fact, I keep telling people I would never have started a business if the vision and the values that I saw in the place where I was working aligned with my beliefs, aligned with my vision. You would have been comfortable. I would have there. stayed there. Yeah. Which, by the way, would have been okay. So I'm not. I'm not the kind who advocates for everyone starting a business. Right. I think there should be something more than just earning a living because you can earn the living either way while yeah. you're employed. Yeah. In fact, there's no guarantee you'll be richer wealthier as we've been made to believe yeah. because you've run, you're running a business. Your own business. I've come across a book called Making Money is Killing Your Business. Whoa. And it says that the fundamental reason, it asks the question, what is the fundamental reason why people should start business? And so many examples are given. To be rich, to do all these things, to impact people. And the guy says, no, it is to be free. And, and, and it's amazing. Free, not in the sense that just wake up and do nothing. Free that you choose the kind of impact you want free that you choose the kind of legacy free that you get to create your own path chatter your own path yeah? yeah go to the road less traveled and leave a trail that's the purpose of you getting to start an entity it's like you give the example of a child you only bring a child on earth not because of your of pleasure not yeah. because you felt like you wanted to have you know and yeah. then have a child no those children are born with a purpose and you expect it to nurture them towards that which they are created for. But is that how we view it? Maybe not. And that's why you have many absentee fathers. But before I get there, I'll come back to the point. The point, the second point she makes, which is don't, uh, don't start with others, do it alone. Again, is a good thing if your vision is about you. Now, for me, again, what she didn't know is that if a vision is bigger than a visionary, to me, it's not a worthwhile vision. If I succeed without a successor, I have failed. 
So I have had sleepless nights working around relationships at a partner level, at an associate level, at all these levels. Why? Because I want something that exists beyond me. And in my generation, I must ensure that people catch this vision and run with it. That way, there's no way I could have started alone. Yeah. So again, that was something for her to appreciate. Yeah. I had to start because I shouldn't be despised because I'm young. I felt there was an impact I could make. Yeah. Two, I had to make it with others mm. because it was bigger mm. than myself. Over the years, three partners became four, became five, became six, and a very large team of, of staff that we yeah. employ. Yeah. So yeah. there was there was a partner. Yeah. Because you talked about your mom, a partner, yes. and a, yes. a, 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 yeah. an employee. Yeah. Right? Now, a partner of mine asks me a question. Again, you asked, what are these doubts and how did I deal with them? So in October, I think around October 2013, we're supposed to start January 2014. Mm. This friend of mine asks me, Alex, we're a group of five, and he says, Alex, do you think, do you have any clients? Who are you going to serve? Yes, you might have a very good product, but where are the clients? Are you sure that, you know, what the future is going to look like? And I told her, I told him honestly, I don't know. I am not sure. But one thing I'm reminded, and again, these are the exact words I used. One thing I'm reminded is when God speaks with Abraham and says, I'm calling you, he asks him to leave the land that he was accustomed to, in this case, the law firm that you've talked about, yeah. to go to a land that did not even have a name. Mm. The land I'll show you. A land I will show you. Like, it's one thing to ask you, Lawrence, <laughs> I want to send you to this place. I want to it's to another to, to tell you, take mm. a plane <laughs> to a place I'll show you. Yeah. What would you do? Or set off, start from home, drive, mm. go to a land. Which direction do you even take? The point about that for me is that because it's a land I will show you, then you have to depend on me. Right. No wonder scripture says in Proverbs 3 that in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Yeah. There are people that start with assurance and there are some of us who start from zero assurance. We start from instruction. When David was asked if he would take on this battle, he said, is there a cause? As he was speaking to his gallant soldiers, he says, mm-hmm. guys, the focus is the reason. Mm-hmm. It is the why. It is not the how. Mm-hmm. It's not even the what. Mm-hmm. It's the why. If that why is so deep, it will counter any challenge that you will come across. Then there was an employee. Now, <laughs> the employee is the more interesting one. So over the years, mm-hmm. um, this question that continues to exist are you sure are you sure keeps coming up it's not just at the question of starting and that's why for me the why is necessary yes when you face challenges most likely what is going to come to mind is am i even on the right track was i even right to start this business yeah but please remember your why the one thing that remains across over time will be your why so we are doing a retreat and we do this with our staff we retreat together to plan for the year and this stuff says guys from the way you've explained this story People are coming, leaving. Others or whatever. We are not understanding. Is there stability and certainty? Those were the two words that were used. And I don't remember the exact words I used. But I think where I come from in answering that question, even today, Mm. is to say we do not know what the future holds. Mm. But we know who holds the future. We do not even know how long it will take for us to get. We don't even know if we'll get there together with whoever it will be. Who will get there? The one thing we are sure of is that both the end and the process of getting to the end mm. are impactful. Yeah. yeah. But two, big things. We tend to see, you see the McDonald's and all these br- big brands in the world. Yeah. And you tend to think that it was a smooth sale. Until you read the full story. Until you actually read that Steve Jobs was fired from his company. His own company. That he started. Surprisingly, that's news to some people. Yeah. Right? Mm. But what happened before he died? What happened later when the company felt they needed him back? The point there being, it's not about who comes, who goes, who stays. For me, it's about the why. It's the reason you started, and people are catching it and running it, as scripture says. So So, those are three examples I would want to share. So what you will tell us is that there's no point of daring without a why. No, not at all. Right? Because at at the end of the day, you you will inevitably face a crisis, opposition, setbacks, which you have faced. Yes. So at that point that you were starting, you as Alex, yes. did you have any doubts? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of Are course. you scared? No, of course. <laughs> of course. I did it afraid. Yeah? I did it afraid. Um, I like, sorry, I'll keep referring to these scriptures. I like the way the message version puts Philippians 4, 6. Yeah. About not being worried. Mm. Yeah. It says, through prayer, 
let your let your let your worries mm. be turned into petitions. Mm. Mm. The point for me there is <laughs> that actually worrying is human. No more. Having causes, ha- having having fears is no more. Yeah. You know, it's for as long as we are alive, there's going to be something that questions why. In fact, there's a time I, I intend to give this funny example. There are times where I fear death so much that I would not leave the house. Whoa. I kept thinking, man, what if I walk out? I don't even know where the thoughts came from because oh. I was very young. I didn't even... Was, have, it, yes. was it because of uh, what happened to your father or M- something? Maybe, maybe not. Psychologically. But I had debates around death so much yeah. that when I resolved them, it became the least thing among the, amongst the things I worry about. So I talk about it so casually. I am even, you know, my wife <laughs> will, will be concerned. I mean, man, you don't you want your life. But I've learned that it's as good as life. I actually feel it's an extension of my life. Only that it's a more peaceful place. <laughs> you, you know? So so I, I view it very differently. But I'm glad that I had the time to question uh, about it. The point I'm making, at the time of starting, like you asked, I had so many uh, concerns. First and foremost, I thought that... My first concern, by the way, was that um, how would my bosses feel? And again, yeah. I know there are staff, you know, employees yeah. that hear some of these things and they're wondering, I want to jump ship. What happens? What will my employer think of me? Now, my employer was a seven-year period of, of employment. Yeah. These are guys that groomed me. Actually, many people think we're siblings, you know, because they took me from nowhere. I didn't own a suit by the time I began working in a law firm. Mm. It was from nothing, yeah? And they groomed me. So at some point, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm ready to go, but how will I do it? Like, how do I even begin to measure it? Surprisingly, two things happened when I was leaving, addressing that particular fear. My boss calls me in September when I wanted, to, when I was preparing to, you know, break the news. Mm. Calls me in September and says, "We've started the partnership, and we think that you're ripe, you're ready for partnership." <laughs> oh my God! That's the last thing the I would ever want, to, want hear. to hear. <laughs> We've worked with you long enough, seven years. This is the time. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> now, if your why is not clear, there you go again. I've had conversations with people who say, Man, yes, I interviewed with you. I can't join you because when I went back to tell my boss, my boss gave me a better offer, or my boss explained this and that. I'm like, Seriously? Mm. By the time you come into that interview room, you must have a conviction. It's beyond it's beyond how much people can pay you. Yeah. I tend to tell people that I used to earn more money. Because the farm allowed me to have a percentage of the money I took to the farm and all these things. Yeah. I earned more money, I think, uh, while I was in employment than the money I earned for like three or four years. Yeah. At six. Running this business. Mm-hmm. So if my conviction or my, 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 you know, inspiration for starting business was money, I would long have given up. Yeah? But going back to the story of the boss, so he says, you know, um, this is the offer and everything. I tell him, let me think about it. I return to him and tell him, do you remember the guys that you met me with sometime? Because we had a mentorship thing, which which I think is also an important thing on the journey. Mm. Uh, you know, people who have gone ahead of us, learning from other people's experiences. I keep saying Signum is an accumulation of the experiences of the many lawyers that we spoke with who were intentional to sit under their feet to learn from before we started. Yeah. In fact, one of the things we would ask is, what would you have done differently if you were that age? And we would write the notes. I still have notes of 2013, yeah. properly kept from the mentorship sessions that we had. No yeah. formal mentorship, we just call you. Lawrence, we believe in your story. We believe you've gone ahead of us. We admire you. When we grow up, you know, we want to be like, like, you. You, to be like you. Yeah. Can you just give us an hour of mm. a conversation? Mm. And we would sit at Sheraton Hotel on an evening, and after the tea, what our guests didn't know is that a cup of tea of, and a bite of like 20, 25K would actually have to share <laughs> the bill. That's how badly off we were. Wow. We had to share the bill. But what was the point? I've gone ahead of myself. I think it's to deal with, with, with the fears that yeah. are there. One of the other f- uh, so, fears so, so I had. So this guy yes. tells you, 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 yes. you, you tell him, I mean, he, he tells you you're right for partner. Yes. And you now come back after yes. he's told you, you, yes. you you're trying to tell him uh, that. What were you telling him? So what I was telling him was, either way I am moving. Yeah, I think it's time for me to move. And that wasn't easy at all. But I prayed. So for me, again, it still goes back to that. I believe we are not we are not physical beings with a spirit. I yeah. think we are spiritual yeah. beings, mm-hmm. uh, beings with, with, with a body mm-hmm. or in an embodiment called a body. Mm-hmm. And um, so I prayed over it. I said, God... You've given me peace over the decision to start. May you do the same for my boss. Yeah. And guess what? I came across a scripture in Isaiah 55. It says, The Lord will lead you out with peace and with joy. Mm. 
So I said, this peace cannot be just my peace. You said you would lead me out. I want a relationship with my employers mm. after leaving them that yeah. is a solid relationship. Mm. I go and speak with my boss and guess what? He told me, Alex, if this is the decision you've made, it's the best decision you could ever make. Wow. It's kind of rubber stamps it. It doesn't feel bad about it. Oh my God. Who, the person who had just given me an offer says this is the best decision. And I ask him why. He explains you'll be able to live up to what you believe without challenges. He used The words he used, he said, no one will be asking you where you are. <laughs> That's the reason why mm. today my practice is more of altruistic in the sense that yes. I will not just be doing signal. Yeah. I've recently won a scholarship with, with the UK government, Shevning, yeah. primarily because of the work that I do for society. That's how I am as a person. Right. It's beyond the one, two, three clients that can pay me. I feel I have been so blessed that even if God gave me nothing more, I still owe it to the world as the license for being on earth to yeah. serve. Yeah. Yeah? That so might not have happened if you were still uh, 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 employed. Of course because not. The, I'll be chasing bills. Yeah, I'll bills. be chasing targets. Yes. I'll be chasing the next client. I'll be asked, please, you know, this is the mold yes. within which you're supposed to be working. Yes. My boss saw ahead of me and said, man, this is the best decision you could make. The next thing he did yeah. is to give me advice on how to run a law firm in the nice. same meeting. Nice. And when we started, he was among the first people that visited. Today, my boss asks me about, I call him my boss, he's my very good friend. <laughs> he still asks me about questions, different things. Mm. How do you handle your branding? Who do you recommend as a service provider for this? Who do you, why? Because in that short span that we have had, yeah. we are leading by example. And that's not just the people that are below us, even the people that are ahead of us. Yeah. Um, I would walk, we are close in the sense that, close enough that I'd walk to his bedroom comfortably. Comfortably, he would say, "Please come. Let me show you around." Yeah, that's how close we are, and that's how well God answered the prayer. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's a that's a very powerful story about <clears throat> the transition. So you have the 16 million per partner. Yeah. Uh, did you choose, did you have a location in mind and all these things about the rent and, yeah. and all that stuff? Oh, were all those sorted? I mean, so, so over the years, I've come up with a formula for choosing partners. It's called, I call it the BBS. Mm-hmm. Values, vision, skill set. Okay. I, I, I think I should patent it. Because yeah. I think it works. Yeah. Values, vision, skill set. Mm-hmm. Of course, initially, before again this whole experience, I used to put vision before values. Now I know values come first. And the reason is simple. Well, vision is the picture of the preferred future. Mm-hmm. Values is who we are today. And someone said, if someone shows you who they are, believe them. Mm -hmm. So values are who I am. Before we even begin to talk about the end, I've been having a conversation with someone today about organizational design. And he was telling me, look, before you talk strategy, the picture of the preferred future, start with, do you have the right people on board? That's design before strategy. And again, there's a debate. Which one comes before the other? I am of the view that design should come first. I I subscribe to Jim Collins' view of first who, Mm -hmm. then what? Mm -hmm. Anyhow, so... The thing that I'm thankful to God for, and I think is a key component to what we are today, is vision. So beyond saying who are we, we kept thinking amongst ourselves, what impact do we want to make? What does success look like to us? What's what's about this profession that we can do differently and stand out? What's our difference? Exactly. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. Guess what? Whether it is location... Whether it is uh, which colors we use on our, on our uh, you know, collateral, mm. whether it is which events we attend, whether it is which awards we participate in, everything revolved around excellence. Yeah. Okay. As a core to yeah. our vision. Mm. Excellence and innovative thinking. We think outside the box. Our email signature has our faces on it. That's not something you'll find. Why? Because we want someone who has not met with us to connect even just through that signature, because you've written an email, they can't avoid seeing your signature. And people will say, I think I've seen you somewhere. They've not. They've actually just seen your your face on the signature. Tell us about your vision, because when I hear your vision, it makes something move inside of you. How how do you state your vision? So our, 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 our purpose, we say we exist to nurture growth and offer peace of mind. Remember I told you, we were concerned about how staff how people in the legal profession are treated. Yeah. Now, I can't say we are the best at it. 
But what we continue reminding ourselves of is that whoever interacts with Signal, even for a month, even for a week, must feel the drive to grow. Grow at a personal level, grow at a professional level. We push ourselves to create an environment of growth. Number two, we get to we measure our growth by the impact or the value or the growth that the people we support are having. Yeah. So if there's no growth, we're not serving the purpose. And so we like to be reviewed. We like to have feedback from clients. We like to engage at the level of saying, how are things? Are we growing? There are clients we have annual meetings with, mm. where at the beginning of the year you'll have a meeting, and the idea is to say, what's your strategy? Yeah. Ordinarily, a lawyer should just be waiting to, to be consulted. Here we are saying, what's the direction you're taking? How? Your, our legal services are just a company. That's why we, f- we feel we don't exist to offer legal services. We offer to nurture growth, offer peace of mind through the Even, services yeah. that we offer. Yeah. Peace of mind, again, also comes down to the issue of, uh, the, issue of uh, the intrinsic needs that people have, the unspoken need yeah. that people have. I don't know if anyone goes to bed and the first thing they think about is, man, I don't have a lawyer, I won't have sleep. Yeah. How? The only way you think of a lawyer is because you're lacking a peace of mind somewhere. If you lent money to someone and they didn't pay, if you're in a marriage and it's not working, if you're running a business and you're struggling with your relationships with partners or suppliers, you're losing peace in a way. So we are saying we want to get to that. Why is that important again? That in the process of delivery, we don't just think what have you asked us to do. We think about what end you want to achieve. We think about their clients, especially people abroad. One of the things they will tell you they suffer most with lawyers is not technical ability. It's responsiveness. It's the ability to know that while Africa is seen as a jungle, for those that have never been here, they even think <laughs> they even think Africa is a country. You've heard of that being yeah. said. Yeah. So to get people that they can rely on from a distance, and by the way, that group of people includes Ugandans abroad. Yeah, they've been away for too long. I remember I did a program in in, uh, in uh, on a radio called Radio Uganda Boston when I, I traveled to the US in 2017. I was telling people about the legal issues in a landlord-tenant relationship. And the calls that I kept getting were like, look, we are here. We don't plan to go back to Uganda. Can you provide a solution that is end-to-end? We want to acquire land. We want to construct on it. We want you to do agreements with tenants. We want you to collect the money. We want the full length of, of, of things. The point there being, they are saying, we want peace. Yeah. Not an agreement. Yeah. Because there is lack yes. of peace in that area. There yes. are very many multiplied stories yeah. you hear of guys who are abroad, yeah. they send money here yeah. uh, ostensibly to have something constructed. Yeah. When they come yeah. they find a shell, they find some mediocre thing or yes. they don't find anything. That's lack of peace of mind. Yes. So that's what you guys are addressing. Precisely. And now you're t- telling us about VVS. Yes. So all your partners yeah. share the same vision. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Sh- share the same values. Yes. The skill set, of course, okay. The skill set has to vary because then that's what brings us together. Okay. But I think on the vision part, the idea, even broader, broader perspective of it, was to say we are not going to fit in. We are going to stand out. Right. And a lot of what we did was counterculture. For example, we started something called content marketing. Ideally, in marketing, it's common. Legal services are interesting. You're not allowed to advertise. So yeah. the question is, how do people get to know about you? So for us, we took it into content marketing. Mm. The idea being, we have information that is relevant for you. Yeah. There's a new law that has come up. There's a new case that has been decided. There's a new development of sorts. You remember during COVID, there was a lot of anxiety. Mm. And we wrote week in, week out, we had a newsletter. Yeah. Talking about something. At first, when you know, we were told, when we were told uh, about the lockdown, people didn't realize that it would go on for an indefinite period. Yeah. They didn't realize that it would be asked to pay rent for example, yeah. in a space that we're not occupying. So we began writing. I remember writing about turnover rentals. And turnover rentals being, instead of telling me this is the standard rent I pay, mm. let's agree that I pay rent based on my income or turnover in a year. Mm. I mean, those are things people have not even heard of. But in other countries, it's happening. It's happening. Yeah? So the point we are making is, can we be relevant as we aspire to be known? Yeah. Can we add value? Mm. So in a way, you cannot blame us for informing the public. Only that, as we are doing that, at the end, we say, this is coming from Sydney. Yeah. And that's how get people get to know about us. We were intentional to say, if there are events that are supposed to be done, both Uganda and East Africa and abroad will participate. In 2018, we were the first Ugandan indigenous firm to be recognized at the Africa Legal Awards. 
Yeah. Highly commended law firm in Africa. Signa Madwak. The whole of Africa. The whole of Africa. They Being see. intentional. At the East African Law Society level, we've been recognized as a leading law firm. That's not because there are no other firms that qualify. Yeah? I think it's the vision. It's to say our picture of the preferred future is this. This is how we are going to be known. We are to be, as people say it. Yeah? But can you work it out on a daily basis? Does your strategy, does your budget, does all these things you do, do they reflect that indeed that's your vision? So you, you, you early on say that the, it's of necessity that the skill sets will vary. Uh, yes. Will you speak into that, please? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've learned a principle over time. Again, people keep asking, Alex, do you know all these things You know, when you were starting? The answer is a big no, I did not. What I had was a conviction, like I said. I'm learning many things as we go along, and I yeah. think it's okay. Yeah. You really don't have to be as complicated as I am, as I like to say, <laughs> to start. Just yeah. keep it simple, just do it afraid. But anyway, coming to skill set. So using the example of professional services, someone taught me an interesting principle. He said, if one plus one equals two, there's no business being together. Okay. If Lawrence has been making 50 million a year in his business... And I've been making 50 million and we come together. And in the year after and going forward, we're making 100, 100. million per year. There's Doesn't, no business being together. Yeah. Why? Because two, 1 plus 1 equals 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Yeah. Only that it comes with more headache. Because you're now partners. Yeah. And like the fact you, you're doing you the same thing, you'll have as well just be exactly. separate, expecting different results. Exactly. So it's insanity. It's actually. supposed to have yes. multiplied instead of being added. So it's not an addition; it should be a multiplication. Yeah. Now, when it comes to skill set, if we are both lawyers, that our biggest skill or primary skill is looking for clients, and none of us has a strength which is doing the work, there's no business being together. Clients are going to come, and as they, as fast as they come, that's how fast they will leave. Yeah? yeah. So the idea is that there's skill set that varies both at a technical level, but also at an interpersonal level. The soft skills. Mm. So, for example, I'll start with interpersonal. One is good at working; the other is good at doing the work. Mm. Those are just temperaments, character. Mm -hmm. But in terms of skill set, as a firm, we are a full service business law firm. Your one-stop center for all your commercial law needs. What that means is that there must be someone that is an expert at tax, someone that is an expert at corporate law, someone ex expert at finance. I'm going to study myself and, you know, we can talk about it. It's part of that is to build expertise so that when a firm enter, a client enters this firm, they're able to get a full length of the service mm. from across the practice areas. Mm. What that also means is that we cannot have a farm within a farm, like many businesses run their models. So they'll find space, they'll share the costs, and then everyone does their business. In oh, our yeah. case, that's not the case. Yeah, it's one farm. You're a special, a specialist. Yes, it's seamless. Yeah. Lawrence knows me, but has a tax issue. Now, I've done a diploma in tax, but it's not my specialty. It's not what I do on a day-to-day. -day. But you have he someone does. in the in the organization yeah. who has exactly. a good skill set in yes. this. You bring me a court-related matter. Yes, I can go to court. I'm a trial advocacy trainer, but I'm practicing real estate, intellectual property, corporate finance, things like that. So I'll have a partner whose day-to-day -day is court work. So that in this firm, you can be sure to get everything. Again, where we come from is lawyers are trained to claim, and again, I'm using that word carefully, to claim that they know everything. Yeah. So you come to me, I'll tell you I'm an expert at family law, tax, land, everything there is. And it's not true. Mm -hmm. You're simply being a jack of all trades and a master of none. Right. Yeah. Now, another thing that I've seen is about your dare, probably it's not a dare, yeah. but I, I'm looking at the list. Yeah. Uh, the lawyer top 50 law firms, yes. Uganda 2022. Yeah. You, you know about that? Yeah. I'm looking at the list, the first one, two, the first several before Signum appears yes. at number 15. They are the naming mm. of these law firms. <laughs> <laughs> it's people's names, yeah, yeah. right? But you guys, you chose Signum. Yeah. Uh, th was that a dare also? Yes. Because traditionally, <laughs> yes. it's the who is who with the names yeah. Yeah, that, that uh, attract people to, the, to certain law firms. Yes. What informed you guys in, in the way you named yourselves as Signum? Yeah. 
So I won't say naming ourselves Signum and others naming themselves after their names is, is anything special. Yeah. I think I'll just speak for our story. Mm-hmm. Now for us, while we knew that the firms before us had taken on more of you know the individual names, yeah. we understood from our laws that we are allowed to have a generic name. Okay. Generic comes from the word general. Yeah. It means it's not specific to any individual. Yeah. The idea was to set up something that would be bigger and live longer than each of us as individuals. Mm. That's why we've since had changes in structure around mm. the partnership. Mm. The firm has remained. The firm has grown stronger by the years. We are not defined by individuals, not even by Alex Matov, by the way. Yeah. We are not defined by our founders. We are not defined by our biggest revenue earner. We are defined by what we stand for. The we are why. defined by why we are in business. Yeah, you go back to the why. Exactly. If we are onboarding new people, whether at an employee level or at a partner level, that's what we go back to. It's not about friendship. It's not about historical relationship. No, it's purely a question of are you aligned with this? Now, coming to the name, generic is a general name, yeah, like we've said. But it's one thing to have any name. It's another to have Signum as a name. So I remember the time when we said we want to have, you know, let's come up with a name. We went. So someone came up with uh, T.S. Almark. The other came up with Giolo. Uh, another came up. So my turn came. We were three. So I went around looking for a name. I said, God, where do I get this name? Where do I get the name from? So I come across a movie. And I don't watch, watch a lot of movies. Um, but I came across a documentary, The Men Who Built America. Yeah. And I found, came across a gentleman called John D. Rockefeller, yeah. whose standard, he wanted to, to dominate the, the oil oil and gas industry. So he started a company called Standard Oil. Through Standard Oil, um, it was, I mean, it dominated, but also it was standard. It's the standard, really, that others should it's follow. the reference point, exactly, so to speak. that others should follow. Yeah. Um, for me, that was intriguing. Yeah. So at first I thought, maybe, standard advocates. Now... When I brought up, so I, I thought about it and we said maybe standard is just a generic word. Will we be allowed to use it? Generic but also common in the English language will not be allowed to use it. So before we could even do that, I think someone suggested legacy. Mm. Uh, at first. Again, which also spoke to what, what we wanted to do and it was rejected. Mm. We have a law council that's supposed to approve the names. Mm. So my turn came up and I said, I'll turn standard into Latin. Latin is the common language historically for the law. Yeah. And uh, that's how Signum comes, out, comes about. Ooh. So Signum means standard or signature. Mm. The point being, it is the standard for others to follow, but it's also the uniqueness that a brand carries, mm. like in my interpretation. The signature of a brand, exactly. so to speak. Something different. Like when you looked at anything, yeah. you'd be able to know this yeah. is Signum. Yeah. Little did I know that actually that would be the start of many people wanting to brand oh. themselves that way. Right. Moving away from, from uh, the traditional from the traditional use names. of your individual yeah. names mm. to being generic. It's now a very common thing. Mm. Not, not only that, there are many other branding things that we have come up with that mm. people have copied. Mm. I remember a time I was making a presentation, Law Society, we have what we call CLEs, Continuous Legal Education. Yeah. And we were talking about succession planning for law firms and my topic was branding. Mm. And someone asked me after I had spoken and they said, um... You know, this whole issue of uh, of branding, isn't it against the rules? Of marketing. Because the rules don't allow us to market. Yeah. Now, one thing I know is, one, the laws are very old. They've, we've not come to terms with the contemporary affairs. Yeah. If you just went next door, Kenya, people are advertising even on TV. Yeah. And it's okay. Yeah. Our laws have never moved on. Luckily, I had the vice chairman of the law council. Mm. The vice chairperson of the law council. So he's a practicing lawyer. He also runs a law firm. And I said, guys, that I will not answer. We have our regulator here. Let him uh, be able to speak on that. And guess what he said? Mm-hmm. He said, have you seen us arresting anyone for it? Yeah. The point being, we are aware the laws are a cake. Yeah. Yes, they have not been amended. And that's why we've not yeah. you know, had anyone arrested or prosecuted for it. Yeah. And guess what? Over the years... What we did as an outlier has become the trend. It's now the norm. And at first, we're even offended. Funny enough, <laughs> we're thinking people are just copying everything we are doing. What? There's someone who asked me to recommend a designer. And when they got to contact that designer, they took everything, including the colors. They copied and pasted even everything. Even the colors are the same. So we're like, wait a minute. Can't people be creative? What? But then we, saw, we, we thought, wait a minute. When we say we are the standard... Yeah. That's what it means. Yeah. In so, fact, what it also means is our 
value we have relationship innovation trust yeah the value of innovation yeah, yeah. means that for you to be a leader okay, and the people are coping yeah you have to be thinking faster than they are yeah so it's a good thing yes yeah everything you do they're going to copy meaning do more so that then you set the pace and transform yeah. the industry altogether yeah. there are things i'm involved in right now i'm doing a law firm management program and we can talk about that mm. which was a long-held passion Mm. But the point I'm making is, set the standard, others will follow, mm. but that means it's not a one-off affair. Mm. You continuously set the standard. So, before we can uh, talk about some different aspects of daring in general, yeah. Yeah. you are on another day, I don't know if you are open to talk yeah. about this. Yeah. You, you talked about Signum operating even when Alex is not yes. there. And you are on another day uh, shortly, yeah. right? Yeah. Are, are you able to talk about this? You're moving away? Yes. Uh, from the country yes. for a season of time. Yes. It's, an, it's another day, is it another day? <laughs> of course, of yeah? course it is. What's happening? Of course it is. Uh, it's the first time I'm talking about this publicly, so yeah. if we're not friends, I would say let's not talk about it. Yeah. Naturally, as a person, I'm an open book. Um, it can be good or bad. For some people, it's offensive, you know, you're talking about things, why are you opening up this much and all that. Mm. But I have one life to live, and I'm the kind that likes to think I'm authentic yeah. and I would call on everyone to be that I don't fear to talk about my weaknesses mm. I'll list 10, 10 of them in, in 2 minutes mm. easily <laughs> you know, for some people it's man they have to think a lot <laughs> and I even ask if you have to think a lot then maybe you're perfect, you're perfect. but for me who is not yeah. these are not things that I'm ashamed of you know? yeah. so my, my, my story thank God you're asking that question, my story is interesting Yeah. and when I talk to young people, people that not even young people, everyone that knows me or has heard of me, and I tell them I'm going to go to study, it doesn't make sense. Because it's like you're accomplished. You're running one of the most powerful and fastest growing brands. Very progressive. Why would you think of going to study? That's a question I've even been asked even by my own partners. But when you look at my trajectory, as I've explained, ideally, at the age 24, you're graduating from university, mm. and for your 5-10 years, you're building a specialty. When I start at 26, it comes with its advantages and disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is that while people have time to go for a master's degree, for example, and I'm not saying it's the only way to master, yeah. but while they are putting in time to do that, I'm putting in time in the trenches to build, as an entrepreneur, build the foundations of yeah. something. Yeah? Now, for me, it was very, very intentional. And when I talk about strategy, I think I try to do that very well. I knew that if this thing is going to exist beyond me, that should happen even when I'm still alive. Yeah. And that means let me onboard people, as I said before. Let me get the necessary managerial skills inculcated in this team. Let me offer the leadership that I need to offer at the time when I need to offer it. Luckily, our system or structure requires that we rotate or evolve the, the managing partner role or the leadership. Yes. In a space of eight years we've had, I'm the third managing partner. And by end of this year, we'll have a fourth. Now, that again is not common. I mean, who, who does that? People are managing partners of their businesses forever. Now, guess what? They later realize, as life is, that you're not growing any younger, that you're not immortal. Yeah. But you're realizing it at the tail end. When I'm talking to leaders uh, and business owners, I tell them, guys, it's important that we expect people at every level to not only do their work and deliver the results, but also to lead and to, to mentor and to train other people that come after them. And at some point, someone asked me, how do I do that? Because, man, my targets are so steep. And that question made me think, maybe what we need to do is to give a 50-50 to both, to each. So there's a 50-50 on your technical results. If you're a salesperson, deliver clients. If you're marketing, whatever targets they are. But the other 50%, the other half of your targets should be grooming the person that takes over from you. Oh. So in this firm, what we do is you're not, you're not ready for a promotion unless you have someone ready to, to take, take on the position you. that you currently occupy. Whoa. That's leadership development. So my departure, yes, it might be, do you have to go and all these things? But everyone knows that it's not only me that can lead. There's leadership potential in many of these people. And at their levels, they've been given opportunities to lead. For example, while I'm managing partner, we have a finance partner. We have a procurement partner. We have an HR partner. Mm -hmm. 
You see that? Mm. In a way, each one of us is having a feel of the, the leadership. management role. Yes. Or the leadership role. Yeah. Mm. So when I say I am stepping out for this period of time, because I'll be going to study, mm. I don't leave a vacuum. There's already a transition. We know who the next managing partner will be. We know who the next finance partner will be. And that's how it works. And it's seamless. It's you, seamless. It, traffic doesn't have to, have to no, stop. No, no, no. Actually, we don't, we don't even vote. We don't go for election. <laughs> There's already a feel that so-and-so is next. Yeah. That's, that's how ingrained it yeah. is in the system. Yeah. yeah. How, how would you say about the ownership? Yeah. I mean, guys own the vision. Yeah. The, are you happy about guys owning the vision? Not yeah. just the partners, but everybody yeah. else in the Everyone organization. Everyone else uh, owning the vision. Now, I must tell you, that's a 50-50. Yeah. Why? Because I've noticed that if there's anything that as leaders we forget is to restate the vision. Yeah. When, it's, when we say cast the vision, we're not talking about what you said in 2014. Or at the beginning of the year. You recast yeah. the vision continuously. Now, when you see how we behave sometimes, I've been having a conversation with you know, our young people here very, very young and, and, and very energetic team. And I said, guys, I like the way you're working. I like the fact that you're putting in the time. And we're working towards being number one. But have you carefully thought about the question of your lives? Mm. Do you know there are law firms that are losing people? Like dying. People dying. The levels of stress can lead to death. Mm. There's no recording of the numbers and the statistics, but we all know that people will leave a law firm and they'll even say, I'm not looking for a job ever in a law firm. It's common. It's big tech, big pharma, big law, big whatever big is yeah, comes with its repercussions. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, while we are moving and on our way to tire one, band one as we talk about it, how about the question of our lives? How about the question of why we set up? We set up that we may be the best place to work. Yeah. We set up that we may be different. Are we being different? Mm-hmm. So for me, those are questions that force a reflection. And I think when you you know ask the team and what they'll tell you, nurturing growth, we know it, offer peace of mind, as to whether they are having it while they offer it to others is another question altogether. Right. Now, I'm not saying they are dying. We are here. We are having a fun time. It's a great time. We have many things we've incorporated. That's why I said it's a yes and no. Yeah. It's a yes because many will say, yes, we're having a great time. It's a no because while we are doing that, there's a push, especially on the part of lawyers, really, yeah. because they are core revenue earners to the business. The stress levels can be very high when yeah. it comes to a law firm. Yeah. And for me, my next chapter now and inquisition, in, in, I'm thinking, I'm engaging in discussions up now at East Africa Law Society, Uganda Law Society, East Africa Law Society, International Bar Association. Mm. Those are the places I'm moving to. To cause a discussion, not just for Signum, but discussion around the fraternity right. and profession. Right. Yeah. So now let's talk about, even as we come to a close of this episode, let, let us talk about generally maybe someone is not even a lawyer yeah. or whatever he is, but let's talk about the idea of daring. Yeah. If you were to stand on a podium yeah. and to inspire, maybe let's say the guys who are coming out of university or yes. whatever it is, about daring, yeah. vis-a-vis following traditional uh, organic, so to speak, growth, yes. what, what, what would you tell people about daring, the importance, what they yeah. should do and so on? Yeah. I think the first thing I would say, I would utilize the words of uh, the late Steve Jobs. Yeah. Where he says, the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world Mm. are the ones who actually. Yeah. You must be willing to be crazy. And the reason is simple. This world has crazy problems to solve. Ever so increasingly. Crazy problems to solve. Mm. I keep thinking about the scripture in Act 16 that says God determined the boundaries of our habitation. There's a reason why you are in Africa. There's a reason why you are in Uganda. There's a reason why you are faced with the kind of unique problems, unique challenges that you see on a day-to-day. I believe so much so that God has implanted or placed in you solutions that are relevant to solve those things, solutions that are relevant for those problems. God makes no mistakes. So we are here because God has intention, not just we are, that we are alive, but we occupy this part of the world. Right? Now, the moment we understand that, then we have no liberty to wait. Who knows how long they'll live? There's a belief among the young people that they'll do great things when they're older. Yeah. Surprisingly, they grow to find that the older people are regretting why they didn't do things when they were younger. Whoa. 
So when is the best time? The best time is now. Like they say about the Chinese and how they say about pl- planting of trees. Mm. The best time to do it was yesterday. The yeah. next best time is, today. is now. Mm. There's going to be every reason for you to doubt whether you should start. There's going to be every reason to question if you should even go on. The question is, can you dare? For me, the question is very simple and the answer to that question should be, if the question of whether we should dare or not, if we do not dare, then who will? If we do not dare and we ask our accountability, and for me who is a, a, a believer in God like I know many are listening to me even right now, when you get to account before God, it's not going to be a question of what you did. It's going to be a question of what you ought to have done based on the potential he placed on the inside of you. Yeah. That is what should cause you to be concerned. I, I'm only 34 right now, and I keep saying when I was 32, I would tell people I'm left with one year and a half to accomplish that which my, my mentor my role model has said that at 33 and a half years, he said the work was finished. Yes. One, he knew the work, but two, he did not waste time. What if your only time to live is the next one week? How would you live? Emergency. So live that way. Plan like you'll have the next 600 years. Live like you only have one day to live. That's your motto. Yeah. That's how you live. Precisely. And that, that, that uh, mirrors in every area of your life, yep. the way you do your family, yep. finances, everything. Yes, urgency, urgency. Yeah. Talk about family. I am keen to have a date night with my wife on a weekly basis. It's not. It doesn't come easily sometimes. Yeah. But what if that's my last time? My dad passed on in 1992 and he was 31. My mom was 24. There's not going to be a chance if you think there will be. You don't have control over your life. What you have control over is the time you have now and the choices you make on how to use that time. Someone will say that, but urgency is like you're not going to enjoy life. <laughs> not, not at all. Not at all. Actually, you will enjoy life more if you have a sense of urgency. For example, if we decided that we're going to have family as a core, I mean your wife, your children, and whatever definition of family you have, for me, a date night is fun. Right? Yeah. But you may think, I'll do it next month. The yeah. sense of urgency will so, make yeah. you enjoy what you need to enjoy when you need to enjoy it. Yeah. When they tell you there'll be an opportunity to play with your kids, that's a fun time, right? Mm. But you can choose to do it next month or next week. But you decide, yeah, ahead. yeah. A sense of urgency helps me enjoy. If there's anything that breaks my heart, it's to not remember a fun time I had with my dad. Oh. And I've been asking my wife, these four-year-olds are so attached to me. These four-year-olds, we, we are so we, we have a lot of fun. They will welcome me back. Even a two-year-old, yeah? And I'm thinking, if my dad died at, when I was four, as I always think, how come I don't have a memory? Could it be that we actually didn't have any much fun time to talk about? Yeah. These guys seem to be so close in the sense that it would be difficult to tell me that at 10 years or 20 years they will not remember what we did while we were with them. Yeah. So those are memories that you set and you only have one chance to do that. I read a book recently, um, I think the one thing, uh, it's a book written by Gary Keller. He says that there's people that believe that they're going to work so hard such that if they have all the resources there are in the world, they will come back <laughs> and enjoy with their children. And he says that's one of the worst lies of life. It's a myth. Yeah. Why? Because even if you had all the money and came back to enjoy with your 20 year and 25 year old kids, now you're the richest, you'll never take them back to their primary one. You'll never drive them to school again. You'll never go for their open day. You'll never be able to do any of these things despite the amount of resources that you will have. It's not true that we can turn back the pages of time. It's not true that we can recover lost time. No. When time is gone, it's gone. That's why we've got a dare. Yep. Awesome, awesome. Alex, thank you so much for your opportunity, for the opportunity you've given me today to come and uh, talk to you about the subject of daring. Yeah. We've learned quite a lot. Yeah. And uh, at 34 years of age, you are leading one of the most respected yeah. law firms in Uganda. Actually, yeah. not just in Uganda, but in Africa, yes. right? Yep. One of the most respected law firms in Africa because yeah. of the dare. If the dare wasn't there... Precisely. There will be no signal. Precisely. Right. So you've heard it from the horse's mouth, guys. And uh, that conversation brings to a close this month's conversations on the subject of daring. Next month, we're going to talk about something else. But until then, we dare you to dare.
Any last words? I think no. Just thank you very much, uh, Lawrence, for having me. I think that when we get the ch- chance to speak, um, one of the things I want to mention as we go along is it's in, it's not enough to dare at a business level, at a family level. It's important to dare at a national level. It's important to take this dare beyond what feeds you yeah. to how to get others fed as a result of your efforts. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. In other words, make it make the dare as big as huge as possible. Precisely. All right, guys. Until next time, God bless you and bye bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.